Hey, it's Robbie back again with another video, and today we're gonna get trippy. What's up everybody and welcome to the craziest, trippiest, weirdest time of year. That's right, it's festival season. It's that time of year where DJs come out with the craziest visuals, the trippiest imagery, and all that stuff we're going to teach you how to create right now. Oh my god, I cannot keep up this energy for the entire video. Anyway, today we're going to be showing you four different ways to blend videos in weird, eclectic ways. Now I'm a huge fan of Adult Swim's off the air content, which is a program they do, which uh, takes normal video and just kind of cranks it into this surrealist, Fincher-esque, like weird, trippy montage of stock footage and animations from different artists. And I've always wanted to learn how to mosh and uh, crank the footage like they do. So I researched and researched, and this is what I came up with. So whether you're a DJ trying to make videos to play on LED screens behind you while you do your sets, or you're a music video creator that wants to uh, really match the energy of a really off the wall band, these are gonna be some awesome avenues to take whenever trying to manipulate footage to make it look really visually stimulating. So the first kind of blending we're gonna be talking about is data moshing. Now if you don't know what data moshing is, it's a way of manipulating video by using old outdated video editors and actually purposely corrupting videos to make the pixels act in a really cool unique way. You used to have to download this old type of video editor to actually corrupt the footage, but now there has been a plugin created called data mosh that does all the work for you. We put a link in the description so you can find Datamosh and download it yourself. So how Datamosh works is that it manipulates the iframes and the delta frames of your video. Whenever you manipulate the delta frames of a video, that's when you get that weird bloom effect and it kind of implodes the pixels that you saw in the beginning of this video. And when you toggle iframes, that's going to let the pixels stay exactly where they are until they've been affected by different motions. So the pixels will stay on a different video whenever the motion is created, kind of transitioning it from one to another and creating this really odd effect of pixels kind of staying put and being ingrained into the next video. Let me show you an example. So here we're gonna take two videos and place them on our timeline. So I've got a video of a mountainside over here and then a video of an owl taking flight on the other side. All you have to do here is go to your data mosh plugin over here, which you can access from window extensions data mosh after you follow the data mosh install instructions. So here's where you're going to manipulate your delta frames, which is going to give you that bloom effect. And here's where you're going to modify your iframes. So I'm going to crank this up to about 90, and then I don't want any bloom effects on this one, so I'm going to take off the delta frames. So to make sure data mosh works, you have to go to After Effects, Preferences, General, and click the box where it says, allow scripts to write files and access network. This is going to let Datamosh access the render queue by itself so it can place the rendered and moshed video back onto your timeline. So let's go ahead and Datamosh this. So Datamosh is going to work in the background by rendering the video itself and then placing the rendered and moshed video back onto your timeline. So it's going to place it back into our timeline and from here we can see what it's done. So once the owl comes in, it's going to kind of punch into the screen and keep the colors of the mountain while the wings kind of swipe through and create kind of a snow angel in the pixels, which is really fun to watch. So if you want to try the other style, mess with the delta frames, there's three parameters that you can change to kind of get a different feel for your videos. One is going to be your interval, your duration, and your end. So I'm going to put 50 for interval and let's see, 50 for duration and let's mosh this. So as you see, the pixels kind of stretch through and every 50 frames, the pixels uh, reset and you can see more motion coming from behind and it kind of breaks apart in this awesome fractal way that, uh, I mean, you kind of lose the information of the video, but it makes it look like a fever dream, essentially. So if you've been looking for fever dream, this is it. 
The second effect we're going to be using is called the displacement wipe. This is actually something that Todd cooked up because he has an extensive, uh, almost encyclopedic knowledge of After Effects and he came up with this really cool way to kind of ghost pixels into the next frame by using displacement maps. So all you need is one effect for this blending mode and that's going to be a displacement map. I'm going to drag that on top of your top clip. And you're going to want your videos to be overlapping in their layers. So whenever it comes into here, it's going to overlap and then go into the second video. So from here, uh, you want to uh, take away the max horizontal displacement. We're not going to be using horizontal. And then take away uh, this right here. So then we are going to be using vertical displacement to actually create the effect. So we want to toggle this to luminance and then start a keyframe from zero right here at the beginning of the overlap and go to the very end and we are going to change that to about 5,000. So now when you play it, it kind of ghosts the pixels down vertically and then the kind of outline and the like highest luminance of the video will stay into the next video. Now the one problem with this effect is that at the end of the clip after the overlap, it's just going to kind of disappear and have a really hard cutoff. So to fix this, all you have to do is go to the transform tab under that first video, click the opacity tab, and then at the end of it, just turn it to zero. So basically putting a dissolve wipe at the end of the video. Remember when old analog TVs were broken and you can see a bar kind of creating the colors? This is kind of what it's doing right now and it's a cool effect. So that wraps it up for our After Effects blending types. So let's move over to Premiere. So the third type of blending effect we're gonna use is a double exposure. Now you may have heard of this type of effect used for photography, but uh, for videography, if you've ever seen the True Detective intro for season one, they really heavily use this effect. So this effect is super easy. All you gotta do is just drag two clips onto your timeline. Now you want your top clip to be something that has a really stark white background against the person so it can blend easier. This was the only one I could find. So the clip of the white background is going to be on top with the clip below it being something visually interesting. So I have this triangle type thing that uh, flashes lights that's going to shine through to the top one once we put the blend into effect. The blend is super easy. Literally all you have to do is just go to effect controls, uh, the blend mode under opacity and click screen and that's it, that's all you have to do. You can replace this clip with anything else to make it visually interesting, and it's not going to shine through on the white backgrounds. If you kinda of wanna emulate the True Detective intro by kind of revealing your characters and your locations at the same time, this is a great way to blend those two things together and give more information using only one set of shots. So our fourth and final blend mode is using a key transition. So that's keying out a certain color in a top video and then below it putting a more visually interesting uh, striking video that kind of makes it stand out. So here we have a clip of a local landmark outside of a house that uh, is painted green which is honestly super convenient because it makes keying easier. When you're shooting for this key transition you want a stable shot so I highly recommend using a stabilizer of some sort. For this video, we used a DJI Ronin S to get a stabilized shot, and I've got to tell you, it's one of the most stable shots that I've ever got out of a handheld stabilizer like this. It's super responsive, the controls are easy to use, the battery lasts a long time, and, and I promise this is not a paid advertisement by DJI. We just got it in a few days ago, and I guess I'm still kind of fanboying about it. To key out this screen, we're going to go to Video Effects, King, and then Ultra Key, and then drag that on top of your video. Place it up one so we can place another video underneath it. Go down to our ultra key and select the green. And then place a visually interesting video underneath the other video. So now everything that's green is going to take on that layered video, which does include trees and stuff, but the, but the real focus is this statue that kind of takes on this VR look that um, has a different layer that kind of adds the texture to the video by just keying out the color. And you can use this with anything. So if you see a car with a solid color, you can key that out. You can key out a dumpster. The best part about this type of stuff is that it's so experimental. And I'm a huge sucker for experimental film and experimenting with different types of colors and uh, editing formats and just kind of meshing together what video making is. That's the best part about this stuff is that as long as it looks dope, it's fine. Rock and roll. 
I'm Robbie Janae with Shutterstock.com, and we'll see you next time.